Hello, future enthusiasts. I'm your host, Thor. In 1959, magnetometers on board the Luna 1 spacecraft attempted to detect a lunar magnetic field from orbit. It wouldn't be until 10 years later, when Apollo 12 landed on the lunar surface, that the existence of the Moon's waning magnetic field would be confirmed. More recent discoveries have revealed that Luna's past, its magnetic and atmospheric history, are both more complex than we ever could have imagined. The flow of molten copper and nickel deep inside the Earth's core drives a strong magnetic field which prevents the incursion of solar plasma into Earth's atmosphere. This magnetic field produced by the Earth is not a perfect sphere. It tapers in a direction opposite the Sun, creating a long tail. Every full moon, Luna passes through the magneto tail for about nine days. The moon can be affected by this interaction, sometimes leading to lunar dust storms, electrostatic discharges, and other effects. Composition of the magnetotail is not homogeneous. There are multiple layers, and the outer layers include a more dense plasma sheet formed by solar wind. The plasma sheet is about 10 times stronger than solar wind on average. It consists of electrons at about 2 million degrees Kelvin, where solar wind in comparison does not usually exceed 140,000 degrees. The charged particles contained in this sheet bombard the lunar surface and deposit electrons on it. On the near side, these electrons tend to be knocked free again by the strong UV radiation arriving from the Sun. However, on the Moon's dark side, it's presumed these charges can accumulate up to thousands of volts. We don't yet understand what effects this charge might have exactly, but speculation has discussed the possibility of diaphanous wind. Electrostatic repulsion from the magnetotail interaction causes particles of regolith to float high above the surface. Diaphanous wind occurs when these charged particles of moon dust move between strongly and weakly charged areas of the lunar surface, the most notable being the terminator between the light and dark side. Studying these winds can provide valuable information on the poorly understood lunar atmosphere, both as it exists today and as it existed on the ancient moon. We have viable models for understanding the Moon's current relationship with magnetic fields and solar wind, but in order to find out if our assumptions are correct, we'll need to conduct surface studies during the magnetotail interaction period. Such a mission would benefit from a landing site along the Moon's terminator, where the light and dark sides meet. The situation we face today, where we lack data and we have a lot of theories, illustrates the problem we have regarding our Moon. Even though it's our closest celestial neighbor, we understand virtually nothing about its geologic history. And what we do understand only increases the complexity of the Earth-Luna dynamic. In the past, we've had the opportunity to collect samples and perform studies on the Moon's surface. Those studies are still providing us data today. Yet, the more data we gain, the more mysteries arise. Analysis of samples taken during the Apollo mission have revealed interesting features of lunar rock which speaks of a magnetic past. Apollo 12 samples are not the only evidence we have for a rich lunar magnetic history. Unusual surface formations known as lunar swirls also hint at a magnetic property we do not yet understand. Most of these swirls occur on the dark side of the moon where the charges imbued by the Earth's magnetotail are the strongest. Researchers have arrived at two conclusions to explain lunar swirls. That they form from comet impacts, creating localized magnetic events. Magnetic flux produced during a comet impact is estimated to be about 10,000 times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field. Or that they form as a result of an ancient geodynamic process, where rare and low-intensity activity in the Moon's mostly dormant core leaks out as magnetism. We can also combine these theories and speculate that comet impacts might drive some sort of geologic process on a small local scale. Lunar swirls are just another hint at a lunar history we barely grasp. The moon recedes from the Earth at a rate of about 2 inches per orbit. In ancient times, the moon was considerably closer to the Earth than it is today. 
Being closer to the Earth means the Moon's core would have been more active, being affected by tidal and magnetic forces, as well as containing more energy from when it formed. All planets and moons contain some of the energy that was used to form the planet, and this usually drives most of the geologic processes we see in living or terrestrial planets. However, it's hard to estimate exactly what level of energy this would have been. Factor in the energy of tidal forces and magnetic fields, and we don't really know how energetic the ancient moon was. Is there even a meaningful metric for understanding how an active lunar core would have co-interacted with Earth? Well, we can start by comparing data gathered from the Apollo samples with other well-known magnetic fields, like Earth's. Between 4.25 and 3.25 billion years ago, the Moon's magnetic field reached intensities of about 120 microtesla, while today Earth's field fluctuates between about 30 and 75 microtesla. Yes, you heard that right. The ancient moon once had a magnetic field almost twice as strong as the modern Earth's magnetic field. And that's not all. This strong magnetism allowed the moon to host its own atmosphere. The conclusions we end up running into with this line of thinking are kind of mind-blowing. Strong magnetic interactions would have increased protection of Earth against solar wind, and it also would have protected the moon. Depending on your interests, you may have noticed something striking in the data we've looked at today. The Moon's magnetic field supposedly waned between 2.25 to 3.25 billion years ago. What else was happening at this time on Earth? The Earth's tectonic activity is believed to have started about 2.5 billion years ago, right in the middle of the Moon's magnetic decline. Now we should take this timeline with a grain of salt. Our understanding of plate tectonics is imperfect, and relies purely on dating of metamorphic rock. Yet, even if this date is not entirely accurate, the window of time provided by the Apollo samples allows plenty of freedom to shift the start of terrestrial tectonics forward or back some hundred million years. We can see the evidence that a loss of magnetic connection with the Moon coincides with the start of plate tectonics exactly what this means in the bigger picture we don't really know. Further, we can deduce that the stronger tidal forces exerted on the Earth about 2 to 3 billion years ago would have warmed the ocean substantially. Tidal forces and plate tectonics are not the most important aspect of the Terra Luna dynamic in ancient times, though. Again, we come back to the topic of magnetism. Life on Earth as we know it may not have been possible if it were not for the shared magnetic connection between these bodies. Quote, According to the model, the magnetospheres of the Moon and Earth would have been magnetically connected in the polar regions of each object. Importantly for the evolution of Earth, the high-energy solar wind particles could not completely penetrate the coupled magnetic field and strip away the atmosphere. The significance of magnetic connection cannot be overstated. This phenomena would have strengthened the protective plasma bubble around the Terra Luna system and prevented the incursion of solar wind. This was especially important on ancient Earth because at this time the Earth lacked a substantial ionosphere. The mystery represented by our Moon is of huge significance to our species. Life on Earth would be very different if not completely absent if it were not for our Moon's presence. Further, the Moon itself would have been also protected and able to form its own atmosphere. When the Moon eventually lost its magnetic field, a range of events would have transpired. No longer able to hold onto its atmosphere, the Moon would have left a wake of charged particles and gas. Some of this stripped atmosphere would be deposited on Earth. As the Moon's magnetic field declined, a long period of magnetic reconnection events would occur creating X-points in the lunar and terrestrial ionosphere. These would have appeared like the northern lights on steroids, extending deep into the atmosphere and triggering electrical storms. The Moon seems to have played a crucial part in making Earth habitable, a dynamic we can explore and understand by conducting detailed surface studies. In light of these revelations, the case for returning to the Moon's surface is as strong as ever. Thanks for tuning in guys, I hope you enjoyed today's content. If you did enjoy, leave a like and go ahead and leave a comment too, that really helps the channel. 
and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you.